If you're considering taking Ozempic or Wegovy for weight loss and or to improve the control of your type 2 diabetes, then I really encourage you to watch this video to the complete end because I'm going to do something that many doctors don't do for you. Uh, one of the many jobs of a doctor is to explain to you the benefits of a new medication, but also the risks of a new medication, the potential side effects or the potential unintended consequences of taking a medication. Many doctors are busy. They don't have to, time to do this. So I'm going to go over the potential problems with Ozempic, Wegovy, and the other GLP-1 agonists uh, with regards to taking them for weight loss and what you need to understand and know before you decide to fill that prescription and begin to take this medication regularly for the rest of your life. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician, and this video is going to help you a lot if you're considering taking Ozempic for the rest of your life. Now, Ozempic is a GLP-1 agonist. This is a class of medications. There are several drugs in this drug class. Uh, most of them are used at much lower dosages than the recent FDA approval for the new higher dose Ozempic and Wagovi. Um, I think the first GLP-1 agonist would give, gained FDA approval around 2005, but it was in a microgram dose that was injected daily instead of a milligram dose that, that was injected weekly. So there's a little bit of difference there. The, the One of the main problems I'm worried is going to be the, the higher dose of Ozempic that you have to inject uh, in order to get the weekly schedule. Now, one of the main problems I have with Ozempic and other drugs in this class is that the underlying assumption is, is that you're just a glutton that you cannot change your ways, you cannot say no, you cannot turn from your wicked ways. And I think that this is a, a very often subtle, unspoken, unconscious message, but it is the message nonetheless. Uh, it, it, it basically paints your hunger as the enemy, as a bad thing. And I want you to understand very clearly that your hunger is an evolutionarily conserved mechanism. It is very important, it is vital, it is a good thing. It is your friend in the right food environment. And so the other underlying assumption is, is that this is a genetic condition. The food you're eating doesn't matter. It's not the food, it's you. There's something wrong with you. And so, so many people are gonna start Ozempic or Wagovi and think, well, I'll just do this for the rest of my life. And, but of course, I'm just gonna keep eating the foods I've always eaten because the lady on television said that obesity is genetic. It has nothing to do with my food. There's no such thing as a bad food. And so when I do rarely get hungry while injecting Ozempic, I can eat whatever I want. It's fine because, and I, I've got verification of that because I'm losing weight. And also when I check my hemoglobin A1C, it's lower. So therefore I must be getting healthier taking this medication. Therefore it must all be genetic, has nothing to do with the food I'm eating because I'm eating the same thing I always ate, just in far lower amounts. So the next thing you must understand is that you're going to have to, in order to continue to have the benefits of weight loss and improved A1C, you're gonna to have to inject Ozempic for the rest of your life. And so people, you know, we all think, well, the, the future is gonna be rosy, right? What happens if you lose your job, lose your insurance, lose your life savings? What happens if some unforeseen financial catastrophe happens to you? You no longer have that money to give to the pharmacy every month. What's gonna happen? You're now at risk of gaining all of that weight back plus 10, 10 pounds more. Uh, we're seeing in early research coming out, studying GLP-1 agonists, that it, these medications, although they make your fat cell shrink, they also probably increase the absolute number of fat cells in your body. So you're, you're winding up with smaller fat cells, but more fat cells. And so when you do hit that financial speed bump and you're unable to uh, afford Ozempic anymore, you've got maybe twice as many fat cells now that you can now fill up. And that's why I think we see when people stop Ozempic, in many cases, they gain back all the way plus more. They don't just gain back a few pounds, like someone who's went keto, lost 100 pounds, went off the diet, gained back 20. That's not gonna happen when you stop taking Ozempic. 
you're gonna gain it all back plus 10 or 20 more. Another thing, we're already getting reports back in uh, from healthcare providers prescribing Ozempic is that because people continue to just eat their standard American diet, <clears throat> which is very often deficient in proteins, fatty acids, vitamins, and minerals, there is a inordinate amount of muscle loss that goes along with the weight loss. Now, keep in mind, if you're overweight, you don't wanna lose muscle, you just wanna lose the fat. But if you're eating a high carb, low protein, low fat diet, and you're eating much less food than you ate previously, you're gonna lose a lot of muscle. And indeed, we're starting to see this feedback from healthcare providers whose patients have not changed their diet. They've just started injecting Ozempic and they have lots of lean tissue loss. So not only muscle loss, but also connective tissue loss. And so the connective tissue in your face is what prevents you from having Ozempic face. And so if you're not eating, if you're not prioritizing your protein and you're not eating plenty of that and cutting down the carbohydrates, then you're gonna lose a ton of muscle and a ton of connective tissue that holds your body together and makes it appear younger. The next thing that you need to understand is that there is no long-term safety data on these new higher dosages of the GLP-1 agonists. Uh, so Wozempic and Magovir, they are at much higher doses than the initial FDA approvals for other GLP-1 agonists, very much higher. And that's why you can get away with injecting them once a week instead of once or twice every day. Uh, this is probably going to be a problem for many people. And many people don't know that. Did you know that? You're, you're thinking about taking Ozempic. Did you know that they're, the drug company that got FDA approval for this, they have no long-term data proving that, uh, that long-term use of Ozempic is safe in human beings? None. In fact, if you start taking Ozempic, since it was just FDA approved at this new higher dose in 2022, you're going to be the experiment. This is called market data, post-market data. And so they, they get FDA approval, they put it out in the market, people start using it, and then healthcare providers all over the country are supposed to be looking for negative outcomes, negative side effects, negative problems, and the healthcare provider is supposed to report that to the database, which very often, as I said in the beginning, doctors are busy. They don't have time to tell you about all the possible side effects of a drug, much less if you come in saying, hey, I think this Ozempic caused this, that, or the other, are they gonna take the time to log in and report that to the database? Probably not. And so there is no proof of long-term safety, safety at this new higher dosage for Ozempic and the other GLP-1 agonists. Now let's talk about the GLP-1 receptor because these are GLP-1 receptor agonists, which means they activate that receptor. Now we know, everybody knows, most doctors know that there are GLP-1 receptors in your brain and in your pancreas, in the beta cells of your pancreas. And so this makes Ozempic a insulin secretagogue, which means it, it, it's going to make you secrete more insulin. That's how it's gonna keep your blood sugar down. And that, but that's not how it helps you lose weight. So that sounds like a good thing. And indeed we look at your hemoglobin A1C and you're like, oh yeah, it's better. So therefore I must be healthier. We also know that there are GLP-1 receptors in the central nervous system, in the hypothalamus, the brainstem, and the cortex, and perhaps other places in the brain as well. Now, these brain GLP-1 uh, receptors are the ones that basically turn off your natural, normal, um, ancestrally appropriate hunger. They're, they just tell you you're not hungry. In fact, many people who are injecting Ozempic say that just the idea of eating repulses them causes them to have mild nausea just to think about eating or to smell food. That's not natural. That's not ancestrally appropriate. That could turn out to be a long-term problem with regards to creating new eating disorders and perhaps other things as well. Now, is that the only two places that we find GLP-1 receptors in the human body? No, no, it's not. There are multiple tissues, multiple organs that have GLP-1 receptors many of which we probably haven't even discovered yet, but we do know that they're in the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, they're in various cells, the enteroendocrine cells, the gastroparietal cells, smooth muscle cells. Now, 
again, we think that may be how we're having some of the, 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 the delayed gastric emptying and other things that tend to slow down your absorption of food. That sounds like a good thing, but what's the long-term ramifications of mucking around with these GLP-1 receptors? There are also GLP-1 receptors in the heart, in your heart muscle. So what is Ozempic doing to your heart long-term? No one knows. Any doctor who says that they know that it's safe for long-term health in the heart in your heart is absolutely full of crap. Uh, also, we know there are GLP-1 receptors in your kidneys, in the nephrons. Why are they there? What are they supposed to do? What happens when you start injecting what is equivalent to a mega dose of Ozempic once a week? What's that going to do to your long-term kidney function? Your kidneys are in charge of monitoring and adjusting your blood pressure and many, many other things in your body. Are those things gonna be affected long-term? The truth of the matter is, literally no human on the planet knows what is going to happen to all these tissues that have GLP-1 receptors that you start injecting this mega dose of, of uh, semaglutide once a week. No one knows, but we'll find out because you, my friend, are the lab rats. We will watch you and we'll see what turns up. Now, I'll just read from you one of the papers about the GLP-1 receptor in the kidney. Uh, although renal GLP-1 receptors have been identified, their exact localization and physiological role are incompletely understood. Did your doctor tell you that? There are also a couple of studies out showing that the risk and the rate of small bowel obstructions goes up on a GLP-1 agonist. Uh, remember I said there's GLP-1 receptors in the gut, all through the gut from, from top to bottom. And uh, I've got a couple of studies linked in the show notes below about the small bowel obstruction risk. There is a black box warning about thyroid cancer that appears in that handout that you didn't read that came with your Ozempic. Uh, this has really only been shown to happen in, in lab at rats and animals. Uh, I don't think we have any examples of this happening in humans yet, but the FDA considered it so important that they demanded, they required that the drug manufacturer put that in a black box warning. There are also GLP-1 receptors in your enteric nervous system. What do they do? What's the long-term risks of mucking with them once a week for the rest of your life? There are also GLP-1 receptors in your immune system. That sounds pretty important. What do they do? No one knows. There are also GLP-1 receptors in your lungs. What do they do? I wonder what happens if you inject a mega dose of a GLP-1 agonist once a week for decades. What's that gonna do to your lung function? Literally no one knows. A wise old doctor once told me to never be the first doctor or the last doctor to prescribe a medication. Uh, and so the wisdom of that is, hold off, let some other people experiment with it because that's exactly what they're doing because there's no long-term safety data. Uh, and so when it comes to patients, I think that his advice is also applicable to you. You might wanna hold off on Ozempic for a year or two and let your friends all try it and see how they do. And then if they seem to be doing fine two, three, four, five years from now, then maybe it's safe to try. Uh, what would I recommend to patient if they came to me and said, hey, look, I, I'm not gonna do keto. I'm not gonna do carnivore, okay? I just want this Ozempic shot. Prescribe this for me so I can lose some weight because being obese or severely obese is a risk factor for many, many causes of death and disease. And that's absolutely true. I would tell that patient everything I just told you and I would also counsel them thoroughly on a proper human diet. Say, look, it, you're eating too many carbs, okay? You're eating too much highly processed, highly inflammatory, sugar-filled, grain-filled, vegetable oil-filled crap. Stop that, okay? And if the patient might even bargain with me and say, look, I'm going to do keto. I'm going to eat a proper human diet, but I would like to take Ozempic for three months, four months, six months, kind of as a, as a head start, a turbocharge to get the weight loss going. In that scenario, I wouldn't be entirely opposed to a short course of Ozempic with the understanding that there's no long-term safety data, that taking this for years and years won't really mess you up, just like other FDA-approved drugs that we've seen come back after a few years on the market with million-dollar and billion-dollar lawsuits because they killed a bunch of people, a la Vioxx. 
So uh, yeah, I, I'm not opposed to Ozempic or Wegovy or the other GLP-1 agonists. I just want you to be fully informed before you decide to do that. And also I want you to absolutely understand that the food you eat and the junk that you avoid absolutely matters, even if you're taking Ozempic. If you're eating, you know, when you eat on Ozempic, when you finally muster up the courage and overcome the revulsion of food and, and eat, if you're eating a high carb diet, highly processed food, drinking lots of fruit juice, you're still going to be glycating your tissues and your organs and your cells. Uh, we know for a fact that fructose from fruit juice and from high fructose corn syrup does not show up as glycation that can be measured by the hemoglobin A1C. And so very often people thinking that fruit juice and fruit smoothies are healthy, that will be the only thing they ingest while injecting Ozempic. So they're gonna be getting not nearly enough protein, way too much fructose and other sugars. They're gonna be glycating and mucking up and, and, and destroying all the cells and tissues in their body, leading to premature cell death, premature cell dysfunction. And they're gonna have no idea because when they check their hemoglobin A1C, it's going to be better. So if you were to hear this video, read the package insert, talk to some friends, do some online searching and decide, you know what? I'm going to wait a few months or a few years. I'm going to let some other people be the lab rats. I don't want to be a lab rat. And then if all seems to be going well with them in six months, six years, some length of time in the future, then I might give it a try. But in the meantime, I am going to adopt a proper human diet and I'm gonna eat that way faithfully every day so that I know I can be improving my health to somewhat in some small degree, losing fat in to at least some small degree until such time as I'm able to actually determine is injecting Ozempic weekly healthy or is it not? Hope this video helps. This is Dr. Barry, I'll see you next time.